All right, uh, it's time to get into some slightly more advanced texture work and layering textures and shaders to get more uh, complex effects. So the first thing we're going to start with is fingerprints on glass. Uh, I, right now I have fingerprints in blue and they are kind of low res, that's why they're muddy and cloudy and, and not very well defined. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the process uh, is the same whether or not you have a high res texture. Uh, and so that's, that's where I want to start. So if we kind of look at what we have in the scene, right, I have a glass bowl full of orange juice, remember from last time, uh, orange juice was the liquid that I landed on, just cause. And uh, so I've got, here is my bowl, and I should probably actually just call this, we'll call it glass bowl to be more descriptive. So I've got my glass bowl uh, material, and this is what it looks like. Uh, it's going into a mix shader, don't worry about these two nodes, we'll get to that in a moment. But it's just a glass uh, shader. There's no textures applied to it. Uh, it's got, a, I think that's the default index of refraction. If I wanted it to be heavier glass, which it is kind of thick, it'd go to like 1.6. Not super important. Um, as a reminder, with anything that has transparency or translucency, um, well, transparency, transmission, uh, glass, and if you're using a texture with an alpha channel for, for color or what have you. You need to make sure you go to the attribute editor. Oops, come on, there you go. And in the, uh, select the object in the shape tab, Arnold section, you need to make sure you uncheck opaque. Uh, if you don't do that, it will look, it'll have like black spots on it. Oops, gotta zoom out in the view and not in the render. I'll show you here in a second. So this is what it looks like with opaque unchecked, which is what we want. If I check opaque, uh, this is maybe not the best example, uh, you'll get these kind of black spots where there's no light getting through, and that's just because it thinks it, it should be solid, and it shouldn't be. So uh, it'll be more apparent on things like wine glasses with a little bit more complicated forms than just this two-thirds of a sphere of the object that I have here. So just a reminder on that. Um, so the way that the fingerprints on the glass work is it's a glass shader, and then there's a separate shader for the fingerprints, however you want to define those, whether that be um, you know, if they're paint or if they're just kind of oily smudges or if they're blood, uh, if you're going for something a little bit darker. So we, we need to create that second shader. And right now, let me go to something where we can actually read what's going on. Here is my fingerprint shader. Uh, it's only going into my mix shader, which is how we're combining these. And right now I just have this set to a, a bright blue color so that you can see what's going on. Um, although there should be there should be an image texture uh, associated with this and uh, for whatever reason, it isn't. So let's go ahead and, oh, I know why. Because I'm not using an image texture here, which you certainly could do. Um, there's kind of two different ways to do this as far as where you put the fingerprint texture right now, the way I'm doing it, is if I bring up my mix shader, I'm using, I wish I could make this a little bit larger so you can see this. Come on. Okay, I guess I can. Here, we'll do this. I'm going to collapse the uh, my shaders here. And we'll regraph that. Hopefully, you can see that a little bit better. Okay. All right. So I've got my my two shaders going into my mix shader, which we did do last time, and then I have a fingerprint texture, which is driving the mix. Okay, so my mix weight is controlled by this fingerprint texture. Um, and that's really all it is. If we look at the texture that I'm using, it is this image. So it is very kind of smudgy and dirty. Um, this would probably work better if you're not using it for, like instead of blood, or not blood, paint. Ooh, okay, hold on. 
uh, instead of paint, if you're using this just as like to show dirty, greasy glassware, not you know paint because it's not super defined, it might work better. Um, but that's all all that I'm I'm doing. Um, well, let's see if we can make this a little bit more uh, obvious. So I have the internet here, as I'm sure you all do if you're watching this. Uh, and let's find a large image of a fingerprint. And let's go with, it doesn't really matter, this one. I'm going to save this image. That looks good. Okay. And then uh, I need to want to save this into my source images folder. Okay. So desktop and where did that save? Oh, it already saved into that folder. Good. Um, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop because I want to make this a square texture. So I'm going to go to image, canvas size, and let's just go, we'll go 1170 by 1170. That'll work. We'll zoom out a little bit. It's keeping the white background, which is good. Um, Yeah, I think we'll, we'll we'll keep that for now. We're gonna adjust this in a moment, but uh, I'm also going to invert it so that the white will be my second uh, my second shader, and the black will all be regular glass. Okay, so once I have that, then I can save it. I'm gonna go file export. Say for web legacy, this is just the way that I tend to save PNGs. Um, there are different ways to do that, but that's the way that I do it. And I will save it in my source images folder. And we'll just call it uh, fingerprint mat. I know that that's going to drive the mix. Okay. Minimize that, and here I'm going to swap out with my mix shader. I have my weight, and I'm just going to change that image uh, from my previous texture, which was this, to this. Okay, now you can see it's much more obvious. And when we hit render, there we go. Now we have a giant fingerprint over most of the bowl. Uh, obviously, this is not the ideal thing. Uh, so we need to make this smaller and potentially more um, intentional as far as where we're placing the fingerprint. Right? We just don't want to leave that sort of thing up to chance. So the, your first inclination may be to, well, we can just go to the Place 2D Texture node and scale it down. So if we put the repeat UV, uh, let's say, I don't know, 10 and 10. Oh, why did that happen? 10 and 10. And now we look at the render. Well, it, that kind of worked, but this is weird. Uh, and then we have fingerprints uh, repeating regularly all the way around the bolt. Not quite what, we, what we're looking for. So now is where all the time we spent UV unwrapping things comes into play. And um, full disclosure, I did not UV unwrap this sphere. I'm just using the default ones, but it will get the point across. I promise. Uh, what we're going to do is with that bowl selected, I'm going to go into my UV editing uh, node, and here I have uh, my UV shells. So I have two of them. The second one is right here, and I scaled it way down. Uh, scale it back up so you can kind of see it. Okay, so this is the inside and this is the outside. I scaled the inside way down because that does not need to get any of the uh, fingerprint texture because that fingerprint is only going to be on the outside. Uh, so I just scaled it down. I don't need to waste texture space. 
with something that doesn't need a texture. So I'm just going to scale it down and move it into the corner. And then here is my uh, my outside shell. And this is what's going to get the detail. And I can kind of look around, and we can. Uh, be able to see that and we're not. Oh, it's six on the number pad. Nope, still not going to show. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but that's okay. Uh, let's say we want that fingerprint to be on this face. Okay, and we kind of remember where that is. What we can do is we can bring this UV layout into Photoshop and then manipulate our texture to fit that. Okay, so to do that, what we need to do is uh, in the UV editor, we want to select our shells, I think. I can't remember if you have to select them. Uh, but we just go to, uh, da -da -da -da, edit, no. Image. <laughs> Image UV snapshot. And it's going to open up uh, an options panel. So what we want to do is we want to choose our output location. And by default, it's going into the images folder. I'm going to move that to the source images folder. I just prefer it there. And then we can name it, and we will call this uh, fingerprint underscore UVs. Okay, because this will be the UV map. Click save. Okay, uh, you can also, should, before, I, uh, before we click apply, we can adjust the size. I'm going to go with a 2K map, so 2048 by 2048. My edge color. You can have this be white, black. Uh, oh, for clarity on the internet, I'm going to go with red. And tiles, we just want one to one. And click apply and close. Once I do that, I can jump to my browser, and we should have fingerprints UV. Oh, that's the other thing. I didn't set the format. Image UV snapshot. I want to. I'm going to set this to be uh, PNG. Now we can click apply and close. Oh, there you go. Must select a valid object. We'll select the object, and now we can do it. There we go. So yes, you do have to have it selected. Uh, back into my finder. Here's my fingerprints UV. Okay, so we've got the UVs are exported as red lines, and then because it's PNG, it has transparency. The background is transparent, which is ideal. Now. We can open this up in Photoshop. There we go. Uh, and there, the lines are a little hard to see. Uh, I can't remember if you have. Yeah, you can't really adjust the line thickness, which I wish you could. But once you get a background behind it, uh, it's, it gets a little bit more visible. So if I just add a solid color, I'll add black, put it on the bottom layer. You can see that a little bit better. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit too so you can see that yes, those UVs are there. But once you have this, then what we can do is we can bring in our uh, fingerprint texture, which is this one, actually. Yeah, we can bring in the Mac, black and white, that'll work. So now we can bring this in and place it where we want it. And if we refer back to Maya and look at the face, let's say we want it on this face right here. We know that that's the place where we need to position it. So we'll scale it down. And we'll go a little smaller. You can rotate it if you want to, if you want a different angle. Okay. We can zoom in a little bit too. I think this is probably going to need to go even smaller though. Uh, so it's just, with that fingerprint selected, it's just Command T to bring up the, trans the free transform. Go down to about there. Hit return. There's my fingerprint. Uh, now I can export this texture. But before I hit export, there's one very important step. And that is, we need to hide the UVs. Otherwise, those will be included in the texture, and we don't want that. So here is my mat. 
I'm going to go to File and Export and Save for Web Legacy because that's what I'd like to do. All those options are good. You can see that up here somewhere will be the... Yeah, the there it is. There's our fingerprint. Click Save. And I'm just going to overwrite my fingerprint map. Click Save. Yes, Replace. And now we can go back into Maya. Go back to our default viewport. Adjust our camera so we can see it. And hit Render. And we should, but we don't. Why don't we see it? <laughs> I still had my UVs scaled to 10. Bring that back to 1. And now that fingerprint is in the right place, right where we wanted it. And once this finishes resolving, you'll see that come into view more and more. Um, so that's really it. It's, it's you define, you've got your glass shader, you've got your fingerprint shader, so whatever that fingerprint is going to be of, is it just grease and oil, is it paint, is it blood, whatever you want it to be, you add that, and then you can create your map to define where that is visible. Uh, you could do this with like water droplets and have like hard water stains like the dishwasher was not great. Um, handprints, you could do this with uh, scratches as well. There's a few different ways you can do scratches. Uh, but that is, is one of those ways. Uh, I do want to show just the, the alternative if instead of you know uh, paint or blood, if you just want it to be like grease, we can change this fingerprint to, we can start with the glass preset, okay, uh, but then what we do is on the specular we can increase the roughness a little bit, we can also maybe decrease the transmission a little bit, let me close that, okay, and I'm just trying to get a little bit more of an opaque uh, look to it. Oh yeah, we decrease the, tra uh, the transmission, roughen up the specular, maybe even increase the base a little bit. Okay, this is a much more subtle look. And, and you know, it works better with like light glancing off of it. We'll see if we can get resolution enough. It's it's there. might be tough to see, especially with how slow this is rendering. This is the result. I cranked up the, uh, the diffuse weight and uh, the specular roughness a bit, just so you could see it. Ideally, this is something that would be a, a relatively subtle effect, but would really help sell the, uh, you know, some of the realism there. So something to, uh, to put in your toolkit and, and break out when necessary.